It's recording. Yep. Okay. One sec. Rock and roll. One of two things is now going to happen. Uh, me and LCK are going to play Paper Scissors Rock. The winner will be explaining what's happening here. If he explains what's happening, it'll be good. If I explain, just don't watch. If I win, don't watch the rest of the video, okay? <laughs> One, two, three! Oh! Okay, okay, okay. Okay, again, again. One, two, three! Yay! There you go. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, so, this will be a good video in that case. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> now, what, what are we going to, what are we doing today, basically? We're just today, gonna... we're basically, um, <laughs> just, we're, uh, we've done a, a snare and clap sort of combo thing with a kick just to sort of give it a bit of a setting. The kick is there just for a bit of a... so you know what's going on, but um, yeah, basically today uh, it's going to be about snares and... Uh, it's just a bit of layering, basically. Yeah. Normally, like, when you get a, um, a snare as such, uh, what a lot of people are doing today, and obviously have been doing for a while, is um, just layering, like, a snare and a clap. Now, again, this is just a basis of what you can do, but obviously Especially for like those big kind of stadium tracks that you hear and that some of those snares and claps they're like laid up to like six, eight times, um, you know, on, on top of each other. Yeah, so that's different you have like, so for example, six snares playing at the same time. So Diff six different yeah, snares six different as such for different kind of frequencies or layering in regards to certain um, uh, dynamics as such, just kind of that. But today we're just going to give a, um, a basic overview on just kind of using a snare and a clap and essentially what the way I've done it today is kind of to have the snare below the clap um, and just the way they work together fits you know really nice and we're going to write a straight 4-4 four, four beat but it ended up turning into a bit of a break <laughs> beat so essentially we've just got this is the um, just show you just quickly what we've done it's just the kick and then so that's basically just the that's kick. The kick. Mm. And then if we get the snare. Alright, so that's the snare. Now we just put that with the kick. And what we get so far is just. Oh yeah. And then, now what we have is the clap. So I'll play the clap by itself as well. Turn it a bit up. Okay, and then when we play the both of them, you get... And you can hear if I take one out... There's just a the snare, bring the clap back in. Take the snare out. And as you can see, it just gives the dancing dog... <laughs> now it just gives you some extra dynamics to play with, um, extra fullness uh, within your song and obviously um, helps you fit it into, uh, or fit it in creativity, creatively, can't even say the damn word, creatively, jeez, um, in, in your mix, um, obviously to fill up space and just give it a bit more power. So I'm just going to walk you through what I've done, pretty much um, in the way that I've found my snares and claps, I've used actually Native Instruments Battery 3. Uh, now, you know, a lot of people just kind of go through their library. Um, in uh, yeah, I actually, I, I won that in the raffle thing, at a, the kind of music conference thing. And um, I just basically, yeah, just used the library that came with it, just the sounds, the samples, but yeah, explain what you did. Pretty much, I'll zoom in. <laughs> let's just grab, um, let's just get this snare here. The beautiful thing about it is that you can see, um, obviously it has a whole heap of rows with these little uh, cube looking things which are called cells. <laughs> Delete that. <clears throat> yeah, you're going to have to mate, that's just we, too much. <laughs> we, we may or may not have had a technical difficulty. difficulty. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> back. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. As I was just saying before, before um, the technical difficulty, we're here with we're here with um, battery three from Native Instruments, and basically all I'm using it for is just to find my snares and claps. You can use it to find any instruments. The, uh, the beautiful thing about it is um, what I essentially did was I just went to the little drop-down menu up here, file, 
and just went open and once you open um, you can go obviously within the folders within your uh, computer and find where your samples are and say if you've got like um, say you got the dead mouse samples and you've got the snare library there what you can do is just open up that snare library grab um, let's just go here for a I'm in a different folder so I'll just talk on this in regards it's got I'm in a folder it's got punchy snares so what I can do is just click on that press shift to grab as many as I want as such and then I'll just press open and as you can see it's done that here it's opened them all on here and then what the what it gives me is the freedom to play it oh, I've got the wrong one on the the keyboard, freedom to yeah. play it along my keyboard which is just beautiful because it really helps you to find your sounds a lot um, I feel a lot better in the long run to then kind of going through things separately and just kind of having to click click which you normally get delays and stuff oh, just easy you open up all the sounds at once and you go through them pretty yeah. quick yeah so now we just got you can just keep playing music you can play it more musically with the song to find what's going on so anyway we we'll just we we'll just use that essentially just to find both the snare and clap um, and then what I've done with the clap is just some compression just basically to bring out certain dynamics we want within the sound and then we've just done some EQing so if I take the compression and EQ off this is what the snare is now the compression on just gives it a little bit more attack, a little bit more punch and then the EQ takes away a lot of the resonance at the top um, essentially the reason being is because I'm layering the two sounds the snare I wanted to have underneath so I've kind of done a bit of roll off up at the 10,000 mark um, and I've done a bit of a dip here at the 1,000 uh, where essentially the clap is peeking through anyway um, so this uh, this EQ essentially is for the way I'm um, mixing it with the clap but you hear here and now let's go over to the clap same thing again just some compression and EQ um, you can choose to use obviously distortion, uh, obviously different com um, compressor units, etc, uh, etc, et maybe some limiting, um, but at the moment I'm just using the in-house Ableton compressors and EQs, again just exactly for the same reason, just to get the certain dynamics I want out of it with the compressor and then the EQ just to tidy it up to um, fit it within the mix. So, the clap on its own is compressor. Again, it's just a small amount of tightness, and then taking away a lot of that bottom end, which you can see here below the 100 mark. And now, essentially, when we put the two together, we get zoom in. So that's got the compressor working and the EQ on both um, both sounds just to sit them into their spot. So again as you can see for the clap I've got it dipped out um, from a hundred going up to around a thousand where I've got it peaking a little bit which is where the sound is coming through the most just to bring it through and then the same with the the snare as you can see as I said before the dip at a thousand and peak it up a little bit just after the hundred where the snare hits in the most. And that's given us our clap snare which, what, what do we well, get? If, if you cross the snare and the clap, you get a snap. You get a snap, snap party people. That's you it. get a snap. So, this is our snap. It goes a little something like this. Alright. Now, before you get too excited, what you want to do then is group your clap and snare your snap together. <laughs> You want to, and basically by doing that, in I'll, Ableton, I'll zoom in over there where you've done that. In Ableton, um, the way to do that is just basically highlighting the the two arrangement views or as many as you want, um, and then right clicking on them, and then you go. As you can see, when you've got a um, an audio arrangement view on its own, when you click the right button on it you'll see it comes down with a little drop down menu and has group tracks so basically you just click on that after you've selected the tracks that you want to group um, and what that does is bring you another channel 
as such here, which then has the two channels, or as many channels as you have, have grouped together. Now what you can do then is you can, um, what I've done in this case is I've grabbed a bit of a distortion unit, um, Devastator. Now this is, uh, it's, it's a multi-band distortion unit and it really, really gives extra crunch and um, extra oomph to your sounds. Um, and then what I've done is I've added another compressor, which I, I've used the, um, the SSL from Waves and then again just a little bit more EQing. So essentially what the group channel is doing is we're just uh, grouping both the snare and the clap and then we're applying some uh, distortion through it which obviously will help blend them together a bit more, bring out a bit of extra crunch dynamics um, and then I've just used a small amount of compression just to help just tighten them again a little bit and um, then just a small little bit of EQ to obviously fix it up as a unit together. So if we take them off This is what we've got. You can hear it's really low in the mix. Before it was loud in the mix, but all it is, all it sounds like is just the level's really high. Um, so obviously as you're processing, you're taking the level down, but once we put this on, you'll hear the devastator what it does already. It brings up, take it off. So you can just see how much more fullness it um, gives to your sound. Obviously, any kind of distortion as such will work, whatever you know, you, you, you're you um, happy to work with or what you're used to. Um, going straight onto a bit of compression. Just brings it up just that bit more, just to sit it in with a level of a kick. And then some EQ just to clean it up. And before you know it, And that's a bit of a clap, snare, snap, snap, snap. snare, clap, snap. snare, clap, snap, snap, clap, snare would be like <laughs> Claire, which is a nice name. It's a nice if your name is Claire, you have a nice name. But anyway, guys, I help. Um, you know, this is double o double o double o double o two tutorial um, from it's both myself brilliant. and Milan. And um, yeah, I hope uh, this just gives a little bit more of an indication into the world of music and. Um, you know, a couple of little uh, tips on how you can do your snares and your claps and um, applying them together. But remember, like I said, you can layer them heaps. So even sometimes if you want to have a real big one, try layering like six to seven different ones and picking certain different frequencies you want out of them. Um, essentially, just always remembering to use compression and EQ to uh, compression to bring out dynamics and um, give the sound a little bit more uh, pressure so it's got more warmth and EQ to shape it. Um, and then obviously grouping and then applying it um, over all of them together to just squash them together and make them as a unit. That's what you want to do. So, I know you want to hear it once more, so I'm going to show you. That's it. Bye bye.